So today we're doing a lasagna. It's going to be a Taylor family recipe that we like to use. Um, simple, kind of quick. It's going to be tasty and um, that's what we're doing today. Plus some fresh garlic knots. We're going to, um, what I've done already is got se about seven ounces of water and approximately four ounces, 0.4 ounce of yeast, about 0 0.375, 0 0.4 ounce of yeast which equals out to about a three-quarter of a teaspoon. Um, I got that in warm water um, frothing up for us because what we want to do first is get our um, rows going, um, you know, their yeast and everything. So what I also have over here is bread flour and it's um, seven ounces of bread flour and I'm going to put that into a bowl first. along with about a quarter ounce of salt, which is, what was it babe, um, about three quarter half, of a teaspoon? Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon, three quarter of a teaspoon, and put that salt in there also. Now, um, with that, since my yeast has been frothing up, um, all you want is just to get the foaminess on the top and everything, and that's what we're looking for. That's just to get it, get it started. And I'm just going to pour it right in. I'm going to take, take it around the edges. A lot of people use their hands for this type of stuff. But to start with, I'm going to use one of these spatulas. Just a regular spatula. And I'm just going to kind of fold it, twist it in, kind of like you're doing a cake or um, a souffle which I like to uh, make all the time. And I'm just going to fold that in. And this just kind of keeps your hands a little bit cleaner until you get started, just to get the ball going. Now once we get it to consistency of coming together like this, you know, where it's like kind of doughy and sticky, I'm just going to scrape it off my paddle, like so. And now I can start using my hand. That way it don't stick to your hand as bad. That's the, that's the main key that I look for. Is that there's not a lot sticking to you. What I'm doing now is just working that flour in. Working that dough. Really good. Folding over and over inside the bowl. I'm going to try to keep it inside the bowl because it makes more sense. Um, that way I don't keep dirtying up the stuff. So we'll just keep folding it over, punch it down, work it in, fold it, work it, just using my knuckles, just pushing down, making my nice dough ball. And what we're ending up with is a nice tight ball, like so. And I'm going to grab a little bit of oil, just regular olive oil. I'm just going to put it inside the bowl here, just a little bit. And that's just so that when we put the ball back in, it don't stick, of course. And gives it a nice film over it like that. Now, as we're getting ready to put this in the oven just to stay warm, we'll get started on the meat mixture for our lasagna and other um, products that we need. Of course, you need your um, ricotta cheese and um, cottage cheese that I'll be showing you in a minute. Need for the yeast to rise. Once the yeast rises, it should almost double in size. We can punch it down and then take it, um, um, put it back over there once more to let it rise some more. Now, we're gonna go into making our meat mixture real fast. And with that, we're gonna use one onion and about three, four cloves of garlic. I'm going to cut the end off. And I'm going to take and slice it down. And I'm going to use the whole onion, the scrap bowl. Always good to have a scrap bowl unless you have a trash can, you know, close by, ready. And we'll get this peeled and we'll get it chopped up and ready 
to go in. We're going to need um, tomato sauce. And I got some homemade tomato sauce I'm going to be using also. Use it up. And of course some tomato paste. So that's going to be our mixture for our lasagna. And of course um, inside the ground beef we'll also go Italian seasoning which we'll get to that later. Garlic is for the butter that we'll be using. But for now let's go and get this chopped up and ready. Now I'm not looking for a small minced or nothing like that. I'm looking for you know something that you're going to actually taste and enjoy when you actually eat the lasagna. I'm going to get a bowl for the onions. Now my bread, um, I'm just going to, like I said, this is a quick, easy recipe that we do. Something fast and simple. So the bread, we're just going to let sit there for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or as soon as we get the ground beef cooked up and the um, um, white sauce mixture mixed up so that we can um, punch it down once more before we um, go any farther with it. And of course with the garlic, you want to lay it there. Watch your hand as always, watch your knife. Just lay it on there and pop it down. <clears throat> what this is going to allow you to do is peel it a lot easier. Get all that skin off there. And I'm just taking running through this real quick. Because I just want a nice um, medium to fine dice on it. It's going to go in the meat mixture. And um, just to enhance the flavor of the beef. I'll cut that way. And I'm just going to run my knife through. Just to finish it off. Because right now i got strips. I want small dice. or minced as you might say. Salt and oil. That way my noodles don't do not stick. And I'm gonna add some oil to my pan. And I'm gonna get the pan going so I can start cooking up my ground beef. And then while that's all heating up, what I want to do is I'm going to go over the fact of what we're going to need for our mixture that we're going to do. This is a white sauce, as they call it. Um, I can do a classic lasagna where you make a bechamel and have cheese. Taking, um, you know, it's a little bit thinner, but it's kind of hearty. But um, what we do, like I said, this is the Taylor recipe. We do it at the house. It's a little bit cheaper, a little bit funner, and it tastes really great too. But um, we use just um, regular cottage cheese and we use nice ricotta cheese. And we usually do a half and half mixture. Just to get it started, because I got to do half and half. I got too much, I got so much ground beef I'm doing. And that'll be about half. And then about half of my garlic. And of course, as always, you got to season it. Season as you go, it helps build the flavor. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and we'll just let that start heating through. About half of my ground beef. I know it seems like a lot. But I do make a hearty lasagna. It's going to be filled with meat, cheese, pasta, everything. It's going to be delicious.
I'm gonna go and drop it because it's, my water's boiling. It's got the oil and everything in it already. And when you put it in, it kind of, you know, twist it around like so, and it'll help it from not sticking. Also, season as you go. So we keep seasoning. Season a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. have to watch that pasta because we don't want to let it get overcooked. We just want it to become kind of al dente, which means just to have a bite to it. And that's going to be once you can pinch, once you can pinch your pasta and your pinos go through easy enough, that means it's about ready. You can shut it off and um, scoop it out and strain it and go for the next one. Our white sauce, as they call it. And as you can see, it's a lot thicker. It's more like a cream or like a, yeah, like a cream. And, and that's the ricotta. Now, we'll start mixing that in just a second. I'm just grabbing the lasagna noodles, bringing them out of the water into a strainer in the sink, like so. Nice and gentle, kind of, you know, pretty much, because you don't want to rip and tear and tear them apart. And now you got pieces of lasagna noodles. Now, like I said, I've been running the pasta underneath some water for a few minutes just to cool it down and keep it from um, sticking and get it ready. And I'm going to take and set the water off. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of oil to it and then toss it. And we'll just let that sit here. So I have my strainer here. Cause I don't want no oil, nothing like that. I want all the grease off of it. Scrape all the goodness out too, if you can. Let that strain. Mix up our pasta, um, um, cream, white sauce, as they call it. This is for the lasagna. And of course, another good thing to do is to even season this. And I'm just going to do a little bit of seasoning in this. I don't need a lot. Handful of salt. And just to say, I'm going to use white pepper because it's white. And, you know, not dark. Can't see it. Now, the thing is with white pepper, you don't need a lot. A, lot, a little goes a long way with white pepper. And you just keep mixing. And what we want to do is try to get a nice, kind of a creamy, chunky consistency. We're not going to get a complete cream out of it. But it's going to be to the point where it's, you know, looking like a thinned up ricotta cheese. Now while that's going, I'm going to go and open up my tomato sauce. tomato paste that I'm going to need for my meat mixture. I'm going to add some oil to the pasta, add some oil to the water over there, and I'm going to take my pasta add it back to the bowl the pot to the pot and it's going to sit here and once in a while I'll come back to it kind of stir it around kind of move it around just to keep it warm it's not on it's just sitting there just to just a, a place to put it for the time being and while my other beef has been straining 
I'm going to go ahead and add it to a new bowl. That way I can string the other pasta, I mean the other ground beef. This is for my garlic knots. And as we can see, it's nice and soft, nice and stringy or um, gooey, as you might say. And it grows a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to punch it down, fold, punch down, turn, fold, punch down. Just kind of give it a turn and punch, turn, fold it over and punch it down. And we're going to punch it down again for about three minutes or so. Like I said, this is a quick, easy recipe. It's not, it's kind of from the book, but not from the book. Um, it's something we use here because it's easier to make, quick to make, and it's, it tastes great and looks great. Like I said, you're just punching and folding, punching and folding. And I like to stretch sometimes and fold it in on itself. See how it's getting nice and elastic? That's all the gluten's coming into play. And we punch and fold. Now what I'm going to add is I'm going to go ahead and add one whole can, 28 ounces of tomato juice. Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce, I'm sorry, forgive me. This is just to start and see where we're at. Then of course, I'm going to add um, a whole can of tomato paste. Now what I'm going to do is just mix this all together to start. Or get it started mixing together. Because we want to see how much more we're going to need. How thick it's going to be. Because what I don't, what I do is I don't make sure it's not runny. I make sure it's nice and thick. It's got to have wetness though. Which is probably what you're saying there. About the point of the sauce and everything giving the pasta flavor. And that's true. That is, that is very, very true. Um, what, I, what we like to use is regular Italian seasoning. You can use all kinds of different seasonings if you like. And I'm just, you know, being liberal with the seasoning because you want that flavor to come through. I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning. And that should do it. Everything's off over here. I'm going to go ahead and just use my hand and kind of move the pasta around because remember I had a little bit of water in the bottom. Don't want it to be sticking together. And there's oil on it also. So that way it does not stick. And I'm going to stir the rest of this in. Make sure it's incorporated nicely. Sounds funny, don't it? And like I said, my sauce mixture here is not a runny, runny mess. It's always been almost exactly what you're seeing right now. And that's just everything coated nicely. It's wet. Um, I I'm, know I'm, it tastes great. Let me borrow a spoon real quick. I know the flavor's there. Mmm. Mmm. Boy, that's good. And that's ready to go. Put my pasta here. And my meat mixture, I have a clean spoon that I can use to scoop it out with. And I need a bigger spoon for my um, sauce, my cream sauce there. Some people use oil, some people don't. Some people use um, the sauce itself to start a base and all that kind of good stuff. Now, I like to use kind of like, if you want to say it, both. Um, I like to take and just put a little bit of oil on the bottom. Just like that. And what I do is I usually take a paper towel And I just wipe it in there. That's all I'm doing. It's just the bottom. That way, when you're ready to cook, 
it does not stick. Or it actually just helps it do it so it don't stick. That's all it's doing. What I'm going to do is start laying in my pasta just in the bottom, straight across. And it should take about three or four for each one. I like to overlap because if you don't overlap it don't hold. But this one here, since it's tapered, it only needs three in the bottom, which is just fine. This one here is broken. Well, it's over there, so. And then we just keep laying them in there. Of course, we just go straight up sauce. And this is the beef sauce, the uh, meat mixture we just made. And since it's not all runny and goopy and gloppy, you know, you can't just slop it in there and move it around and get good. You gotta actually work it into place. And we gotta make it kind of, you know, nice thinner layers, you know, not real thick layers. You go real thick layers, you're gonna run out of product to put in. Okay. Alright, what I've done is I took um, just a nice layer of my cream mixture, which was cottage cheese and ricotta. And I took and layered it over, nice and thin, over my beef mixture. And then I just threw some mozzarella cheese in between, because that mozzarella cheese is going to help hold it together. The cream sauce, this cream sauce, um, Stopper off shoot is basically just cottage cheese and we're using the four percent and ricotta cheese cottage cheese ricotta cheese salt pepper simple mixed together really good and that's it um, it's a recipe my dad actually kind of showed me a long time ago um, before he passed and uh, Barry knows about it my brother if he's still on here but um, yeah it's something that he showed me and it's something I always kept because it just turns out delicious and it holds together nice. It does not fall apart. It, you know, I just don't, you know, come across as something that's just gonna slide across the plate as soon as you serve it. Uh, all right, we got the cheese sauce, as you call it, there, and then we're gonna add some mozzarella cheese. And besides, you kind of think about it. We're kind of making a cheese sauce in the oven because you're taking the cottage cheese, you're taking the um, ricotta cheese and you're putting the mozzarella cheese on top of it. When it melts together, what do you got? You got kind of like a bechamel. And like I said, we're freezing this one. It's in the aluminum here so that we can have it for another day. Okay, first down again. Okay, wipe my hands off. There's our cheese sauce. All ready to go and I'm gonna layer it with the mozzarella cheese again. And this layer is a nice hefty layer. Always, the last layer of cheese. And like I said, this here is a nice thicker layer. It's kind of at the same thickness as you would have done a sauce or a pizza or something, maybe even. But um, you want it to cover the whole top. So that it cooks and cr creates a, I don't know what you want to call it, a cover, a blanket of ooey goodness. That's what it is, a blanket of ooey goodness. And that's what we like around here. Good hearty food that'll fill your tummy and make you smile. 25 to 400. I usually use 375. Actually, tonight I'm going to use 400 because I want to make sure I get the bread done for you guys also. Um, that way it gets done faster. Size like this, like I said, the one we normally do is a lot bigger. But a size like this should be in the oven about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, don't stick. And I'm going to grab C 
too fair. Now we can use And with that being said again, can you give me another paper towel? I'm gonna throw in a little bit of oil just on the pan. Just to take and so we can it doesn't stick to bread. Here we have our dough, nice and fluffy, nice and bouncy, nice and stretchy. It's really cool. Feels great, nice and light, airy. I'm going to punch it down really quickly. Fold, punch down. Pick it up, fold, punch down. A lot of people come towards you. It's easier even. But I'm just punching it down real quick here. Just to take and break up that gluten again. Take and get it all ready to go, you know. Because I'm just going to grab it. And I'm just going to tear off a piece, just like so. Roll it in my hands. Just like so, until I get a nice little worm, basically. Just a worm. And basically, you're just going to tie it into a knot. And just kind of stretch it and give it a twist. I'm doing another one of those up close. Again, just grab it, get a nice little palm full. Twist, you got yourself another little knot. Grab it, roll it into like a worm, fishing worm, snake, whatever you want to call it. Give it a little twist, pull. Just take and turn it, and just fold it in. Just tie it like a knot, and let the end stick up. It's done, because um, I only want these to rise for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15, about 15 minutes. Okay. Now, do you use the whole egg? For the Along with that, I'm going to add just a small pinch of salt. It needs it. It's going to need it. So I just wanted to show you guys that again. They're rising very nicely. And they're getting there. So we got a butter ready. So why is it eat cheese fresh? I mean, you can eat cottage cheese with cottage cheese fresh. It don't matter. So, but anyhow, I'm going to check it and make sure it's hot in the middle is what I'm trying to say is. And then um, I'm going to turn it on broil and take it brown the top some to get it looking real pretty and sexy. This is my egg wash mixture. And when you do this, you want to be very gentle when brushing it on to your rows because you don't want to deflate them. You don't want to take and start touching them too much and they go down. Because um, you want them to stay nice and tall like they are, nice and fluffy and um, light. When you do this with the egg wash, do it nice and gentle. You just want to cover the top with the egg wash. Just like so. Hopefully you guys can see that. And what this is going to do, like I said, it's going to give the rolls a nice crust. Nice golden brown, hopefully. We're going to have today. That's all we're doing. So, with that being said, this is ready to go into the oven. But I'm just going to set it here for now. Check the temps. That's getting nice and golden. It's starting to get nice and golden around the sides of the lasagna. And I want to get my temperature. Checker. And I'm just going to stick it down in there real quick. Kind of at an angle. Angle it in so I don't tear up the cheese on top. Because we don't want to do that. But um, the butter will warm up nicely when you put it over the garlic knots. Because the garlic knots are still going to be hot, nice and warm. So when we bring them out, they'll be nice and hot. And what I want to do is I'm going to grab a stainless steel bowl. Cause I think I'm gonna toss them. I'm just gonna take and put some butter on it and then toss it a little bit. Turn on us. They actually feel really light, which is good. So 
So with that being said, let them cool for just a second. We're going to toss a few in. Actually, I should probably get them all in there. They're nice and warm still. So remember that. And I'm going to take some parm, sprinkle it all over it first so it sticks on it. And then we're just going to take and drizzle the butter over just like so. Give them a toss. A little bit more butter. I mean, um, Parmesan cheese. A little bit more of this beautiful. Oh, I can smell the garlic in there. The garlic butter. Mmm. Another toss. Makes it all coated nicely. I'm going to turn them all upside up. That way the top is facing up. Just like so. I got all the tops up, but I'm going to take them and sprinkle one more time of the Parmesan cheese. And then a little bit more butter. And that's that. Like I said, you can actually make them look even nicer by putting some parsley in with the Parmesan cheese as you toss it. And it would look even better. That's the extra butter. Parmesan cheese. Mmm. That looks so good. Mm. It does look good. That actually looks just fine. Because when you brown your um, cheese on top, that's what you're going to get. It's going to look, to me, gorgeous. Nice and brown. Um, now, now that's, that's just nice bread there. Mm. Half, babe? Yes. That is done completely. All the mm. way down to the bottom. That is delicious. Mm. That really is good. I wish you could taste this. Mm. Here comes one of the kids. Mm. Here, eat that the rest of that one. Mm. We are going to try to take a piece out. Ooh, very hot. I know guys, I'm using my fingers, that's because I don't have no, nothing else. Dylan, go get my phone. But it's still holding together pretty good. I mean, you see it is oozing out a little bit, but it's not that bad. Even though it has been, a, um, it's still super hot. And what I'm going to do is just stick this row right next to it. And then top it. But usually you might want to use green onion, I mean, um, parsley. But of course this is what we have. And it still makes it look pretty. A little bit of green makes everything look pretty. Right? So that is... Tell you what, let's just go crazy. Well, hurry up and get crazy because we're ready. That is our lasagna, and I hope it looks good enough for you guys. Somebody's got to taste it. Kids, my wife, they're all saying, eat, eat, eat. Finish the stream.
Mmm. That is so good. And like I said, the longer it sets, you know, give it at least 15 minutes. It'll hold together even better. You'll be able to bring it out. You'll be able to see the layers better and everything. But this is, this is delicious. And like I say, you can use the bread. Scoop up some of that sauce. Mmm. And again, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Those of you, okay. this is Chef Taylor, come cook with me. I have a YouTube channel. It's called Chef Taylor, come cook with me, of course. Come check it out. We have all kinds of videos, and we're going to put more and more on there. What we did tonight going to be spliced down and even smaller. That you know, they're 20, 25 minutes long. That way you can you know see what we did, how we did it. And again, appreciate all the follows I got tonight. Appreciate everybody being here to host from Troy. And you guys are great. I hope to see y'all back here again. And to, like I said, be watching for me because we're going to do a lot more. So again, it's Jeff Taylor, come cook with me.